Cory Booker grew up in Harrington Park, which is located in the affluent area of Bergen County, close to the New York borderline, as you can see on this map here. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this. Bergen County, 2024. The medium property tax in Bergen County, New Jersey. Bergen County has one of the highest medium property taxes in the United States and is ranked fourth of the 3,143 counties in order of medium property taxes. The average yearly property tax paid by Bergen County residents amounts to about 8.29% of their yearly income. Bergen County is ranked third of 3,143 counties for property taxes as a percentage of median income. So you can see right here, you know, Cory Booker comes from the heart of this. This is where he grew up at. He doesn't come from Newark. He doesn't come from poverty. He doesn't come from being poor. He doesn't come from poor people. He doesn't come from the average black people. He's not even really uh, 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 the average black folk. Cory Booker studied political science and sociology and played tight end for the college football team. You know, he wrote for the Stanford Daily and, you know, he spoke about racial profiling and anti-gay prejudices. He once stated, I'm a black man. I'm six feet, three inches tall, 230 pounds, just like King, Booker wrote. Do I scare you? Am I a threat? Who is Cory Booker? Cory Booker was born on April 27th, 1969 in Washington, D.C. to affluent civil rights activists. Never heard of them. I don't know who they were, civil rights activists. That's a good lie. He attended prestigious schools, Stanford, Yale. Then he said, I want to go to North be a politician. He went to Newark. He said he was vowing to fight crime, uh, to improve education services. And Booker, he got Sharp James locked up. Booker was a fed, and he went on to become the mayor. And, you know, he got a lot of money from uh, Mark Zuckerberg. And it was like $100 million, and all that money went into the democratic system and disappeared. That's all we know. After our revolutionary leaders died, mainstream media and those government agencies and politicians and the political parties, they decided that they were going to tell us who our leaders are and who they should be. So we have people out there that we are told is representing us and we're told that we should admire. But these people, you have to understand, they were chosen. And they're chosen to give you the impression that you have someone fighting for your cause when you don't. Cory Booker is one of those people. Jim Clyburn, one of those people. Barack Obama, one of those people. Kamala Harris, one of those people. Those people didn't just get there because they worked hard and they went to a good school. There are a lot of people that work hard and went to a good school. They don't get those spots. They don't get those opportunities. I wonder why. Let's continue. How are phenomenally qualified, phenomenally experienced. You would see more black governors, you would see more black senators, you would see more African American CEOs. This next generation is coming up behind my parents' generation. It's incredibly qualified, incredibly competent, competent in making many moves. So my only hope is with, with, with that, and, the, and so the people, people like to think that one black person speaks for all black America, which is, which is so offensive to me. So I'm sorry, Jesse Jackson doesn't speak for, for me. Uh, Al Sharpton doesn't speak for me. Uh, um, um, it's just, it, it, there's as much diversity within the black community, your God, as there's diversity within the Jewish community. 
So now this is, this is what he does. Like, well, one person, one black person doesn't speak for the entire group, but here is Cory Booker doing just that. This is why they asked him doing just that speaking for everybody. Like, it's just, they look at Cory Booker. They're like, we got Cory Booker. We got him on our side. We had no problem lobbying someone like him. How do we get the rest of them? Keep in mind, we are only 13% of the population. 13%. That's it. We're not like this huge group in the United States. Two Jews in the town got three synagogues, okay? <laughs> so so that's that's the reality that, that there is. So the only thing I can say is that this next group of, of African Americans are very visionary, very much full of hope, very value-based, as I know them. Harold Fords, Archer Davises, and many other people that APAC knows. And the only thing I think that, look, I think that APAC, what, it's, it's critical that you find, that you continue to find, not with them when they're Congress people, you find those black leaders when they're 22-year-olds at Oxford, uh, when they're 24-year-olds as, as a city council president, and you go to them then and say, come. Did you hear what he just said? He just told them when to find them. You see what I'm saying? This is like, he said, you find those, those black leaders when they're in college, go to them, start targeting them when they're in college. Start targeting them when they're in positions of like city council. Do you see what he's doing? Giving them advice. This is Cory Booker selling out the black community, telling lobbyists to target these kids in college, target them when they're city councilors. Israel. Let us let us let us start showing you what this is about. That's one of, of a key mission of APAC that we must continue, which is finding future leaders, young leaders in America. I, I'm at the Aspen Institute. They've done a great job. They have this young leaders group. That whole group should go to Israel. Um, um, these are the kind of things that need to be done. You hear this? See, look, this is what's happening. Listen to this part where he said that whole group should go. Watch this. And you go to them then and say, come to Israel. Let us let us let us start showing you what this is about. That's what a, a, a key mission of APAC that we must continue, which is finding future leaders, young leaders in America. I, I'm at the Aspen Institute. They've done a great job. They have this young leaders group. That whole group should go to Israel. Um, um, these are the kind of things that need to be done for ultimately for us to combat that. But please, I, I appeal to Jews all the time, please do not think that there are, that just because such and such a black leader come, gets up there, whether it be uh, a, a reverend right or whomever, and says something stupid, like many leaders, period, do, uh, and, 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 and spread that around to the, to the, to the, for, for the entire black community as much as Jews would never want to be held responsible for everything she would have Thank you. <laughs> so what Cory Booker did is he told them, go to them early and get them to come to Israel. Don't get them to go to Gaza. Don't get them to go to the West Bank. Cory Booker telling them how to propagandize you early on. Now, in order to understand why he's even in that room in the first place, you have to understand who Cory Booker is and where he came from. So basically, prior to all of that, his claim to fame was he was a high school football star. I swear. That's it. So Cory Booker is not from Newark, and he is a Democratic plant, and he came there saying he wanted to fight crime. So basically, he came there to oppress black people. And according to this article, his parents were actually among the first black executives at IBM. Now, what we need to do is a background check on his mother and father to see who they really were involved with and the groups that they've been involved with, you know, because this guy's not official. It goes on to say he's raised in Harrington Park, New Jersey, and Booker went on to attend Stanford. See, so he's not from Newark. He doesn't even like niggas from Newark. You know, this guy's an imposter and he's a fraud, man. It's a shame. Yeah, this guy was a varsity football star and he had student run crisis hotline. He was a straight snitch back then. And upon his graduation from Stanford, Booker was awarded a Rhodes scholarship to study at the University of Oxford. 
So basically, he's taught by the people to be who he is. He's one of them. He's not. He's not one of us. Cory Booker's not like us. I am in Israel. About this time yesterday, I was jogging behind me in the old city when I got a urgent call from my chief of staff telling me to get back to the hotel as quickly as I could, that Israel was under attack. There were thousands of rockets being launched. When I got back to the hotel, I joined others in the bomb shelter or the stairwells of the hotel. Frightened faces, there were children and elderly families many Americans. There was a sense of fear and worry and a knowledge to many of us that there were horrific things going on around the country at that time. Hundreds of people have been killed. Thousands of people have been wounded in a level of attacks at a scale that is staggering and really has not been seen in this country for over 50 years. We who believe in peace and freedom and human rights for Palestinians, for Israelis, for all humankind must reject those. Because for a long time, Cory Booker would weapon. talk about the fact of, oh, my parents experienced housing discrimination. We had to deal with this in, in, in New Jersey and they weren't sold a house until their white friend went to the realtor and then they sold the house to him and yada, yada. He loves to tell that story. But Cory Booker also likes to sell out his own people. He has no problem throwing the black community on the bus that he claims to care so much about. So you got to understand where he came from so that you can understand who they target and why. 